yo, yo, what's going on guys? Reese here from More Than Lifting with the More Than Lifting podcast. Conversations about calisthenics, body weight training, gymnastics, all that good stuff. I'm a personal trainer from the UK, I run morethanlifting.com, a site all about body weight training and calisthenics. And uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to use progression templates in your workouts. Okay, so uh, let's basically get straight into it. <laughs> so... Over the last few episodes, I talked a lot about variations and progressions and templates and formulas and all sorts of stuff like that. But it's all good knowing the theory, but how can you actually use that in your workouts and programs so that you can progress and you can achieve whatever skill it is, say, we'll use a front lever as today's example, and so to achieve your front lever. Okay, so in this episode, we're going to talk about a couple of different ways you can go about using these templates and turning them from just concepts and a bunch of different exercises in a row into something that is going to actually move you forward. All right. Loads of people know about all these progressions. It's not a secret, these progression templates and different formulas. But the difficult thing is actually being able to translate that into something palpable, you know, something you can actually get your hands on and use. So we'll start with just the basic progression. So you've got your dynamic skills, all right? So we'll just use this formula as an example. All the templates kind of, well, the dynamic and isometric skills kind of work the same, but uh, because they're skills ultimately and there are different levels of progression. Uh, so it applies for all of them. It doesn't just apply to your front lever. It can be the same for muscle ups. All right, and uh, so yeah, just as a, a little <laughs> before we get started. So really, if you're trying to achieve your front lever, as we know, as I've spoken about before, you always front load your training, all right? So you're always doing your hardest stuff first, whilst you've got the most energy, whilst you're the freshest and your muscles are ready. So you're not pre-fatiguing stuff and trying to do harder things later when you can't do them ultimately because or you can't do them to your best ability and the only way you're going to really improve is by working at your best ability uh to uh, sorry on each skill to your best all right and you do that by doing it first you have a quick warm-up get the blood pump in and then you're full of energy and life and ready to take on the world and that's when you go bang let's work on the hardest stuff these progressions my target my goals yeah and then later on in the workout you can worry about balancing everything and um, doing your finishes and stuff. And we'll talk about how that can apply actually with your progressions in a minute. But for the minute, you're trying to do a front lever is today's example. So when you're trying to do your front lever, wherever you're at, right at the start of your workout, you're gonna do your best front lever, all right? And it doesn't need to be a full straight leg front lever. It can be a straddle if that's your best. It can be a single leg if that's your best, but you gotta do two then. Uh, and uh, it could be an advanced tuck if that's your best or just a regular tuck even if you're uh, just starting out. But if you can't hold a tuck front lever right now and you want to learn a front lever, do your tuck front lever right at the start. All right. And it doesn't mean you need to do sets and sets and loads of different uh, tuck front levers before you can do anything else. Because ultimately, if you're at the front lever stage, you just tuck front lever. Sorry, then you really just need to get stronger. <laughs> But working in that position right at the start of the workout means that you're going to give it your all, give it your best, and you can hold it for longer, you can have better posture, and uh, it's it, that's just when you want to do it, all right? So even if you just go in there and go and bang, I'll just do a front lever, a tuck front lever, advanced tuck, we'll say, or a single leg, we'll use as the example, all right? So your single leg front lever. And uh, you go, right, I'm going to get in the gym or you're going to get down the bars, have your quick warm up and you're going to do the best single leg front lever you absolutely can. Your posture is going to be perfect. Even if it's just for three seconds, you're going to go boom and you're going to own it. And uh, yeah, then you can do three seconds on the other side because it's asymmetrical. <laughs> but that's another conversation. Uh, <laughs> so straight away, bang. All right. If you can hold or if it's a straddle and you can hold it for five seconds, then amazing. All right. And uh, that's A is just to be like, because when you get there, because you have the most energy, you will be able to do it better than you can later. So it kind of doubles up as the best time to be working all those little muscles and stuff that you, and working that kind of 
position while you have the energy to actually be there and it's going to knack you it's going to absolutely screw you for the rest you won't be able to do your regular 10 pull-ups you might have only be able to do eight but that just shows that it's working for you all right so don't let that be like uh discouraging because ultimately it's the front lever you're after you can already do pull-ups so don't even worry about it <laughs> So start straight away, do your most, your best version of that exercise, your highest level progression. If it's muscle ups, then you're gonna go there and you're gonna do, you're gonna try a muscle up straight away, first thing. Don't do anything else. Just do your warm up and then do a muscle up, all right? And you probably won't be able to do it. If you can't already do muscle ups, that's okay but you are giving it your best shot right at the start, all right? Then you can do a quick set of negatives or something. You can jump up there and do some negatives and that's gonna be your kind of first set that you do. It's gonna be hitting that goal, hitting that highest level progression you can, all right? And that is gonna push you closer towards that goal. It's gonna move you down the progressions faster than anyone who's doing it right at the end. So that's the first way, all right? And it doesn't mean that you only do one little front lever or you do one little muscle up, all right? If you can do a, a 10 second straddle, do a 10 second straddle, all right? And then I'd really be saying, try your front lever, <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. Do the hardest stuff, do it. If you're working the specific skill, if you're doing a skill cycle, then you're probably gonna do sets and you're probably gonna do like five of them or five lifts and stuff like that. But we'll get that into that in a sec. Basically, you're gonna do the hardest thing straight away, bang, and you're gonna own it, and that is gonna be the basis of all, all that progression. That's gonna set the stage, set the tone for that workout, okay? And because you, because this is the second benefit to it, because you're giving it your all while you have your best energy, you're gonna do your best version of it. So it's gonna give you that motivation. You'll see a little bit of progression from last time. You'll be like, yeah, I held it for like an extra two seconds, or like something like that. You'll have some kind of, feedback it might not always be positive you might think oh i really didn't i really didn't do as good a front lever but that's okay all right because you're giving it your best shot while you can and if you're fucked still from yesterday's workout then obviously it's going to be harder but ultimately you're going to get your best version of that out straight away so it's going to set the stage for your workouts for you mentally and physically all right so the next thing so how else can you use these progressions in your workouts to achieve these skills so the next thing is doing sets of stuff, all right? And this can look different depending on whether they're dynamic or isometric skills, but that's basically because you're gonna try and make them all dynamic or isometric. And um, sorry, you're gonna try and turn an isometric into a dynamic skill so that you can do it for reps. All right, and this becomes, this becomes like a strength element because you're working it as a dynamic exercise, you can do it for your reps, you can do a 10 rep set of like front lever raises. Okay, so it might look like your straddle's your best one, the best version of a front lever you can do. So you might do a single leg, take it back a step because you are gonna do like press raises. And um, yeah, that's what you do then. So you go single leg cool, that's the next one, do five on each leg, keep it nice and balanced, and that's my set of 10, all right? And that changes that progression into a dynamic set, all right? So you're not just going and doing a front lever and then going straight onto pull-ups. You're going and doing your best front lever. Then you're dropping it one, and you're gonna go, right, I'm gonna do single leg presses, single leg lifts, all right? And that's basically in dead hang, activate your shoulders, and then press straight up into that position. Like you would go into a tuck lever, like just press straight up into it, kind of just lever from your shoulders. I mean by a press, sorry, I should have explained that. <laughs> so you're in your tuck lever, and you, you, so you're in a dead hang, activate your shoulders and press up, which is levering from your shoulders, pressing the bar down into your hips, so you get a bang in tool, into that front lever position. All right, your bars aren't actually gonna come to your hips, but they, they're gonna stop halfway, and that's how you're gonna be in a front lever, because you'll be horizontal. So single leg, you're gonna do that, five each side, press hold up to front lever, two second pinch or whatever, just pause at the top to own it, back down. All right, as you go through this set, obviously your form is going to deteriorate massively. All right, and that's okay, because that just shows that it is working. <laughs> if you are staying in perfect posture the whole time, then you're doing the wrong one. All right, and that doesn't mean you should just let it slip, you should obviously try and always have the best technique and form nice pointy toes, you know, little things like that that are gonna help. And you should always aim for the best, but it's never gonna be 100% all the time, 
All right, go watch the 100 push-up challenge on YouTube or something, you'll see exactly what I mean. My form is all over the place uh, towards the end of the set because ultimately I've just done 80 or 90 push-ups, so obviously it's gonna affect all my muscles, it's gonna affect the posture slightly. All right, that doesn't mean, that isn't an excuse. You can't be like, oh yeah, well, it's just cause, you know, I'm, I'm fatigued. <laughs> no, that's not good enough. You should always try. Focus on that, you know, that should be part one of your, of your sets is your posture and your form, but it's not always going to be perfect. So don't kill yourself. If it starts dropping, if it gets that bad, then just take it a step back and work it like a drop set. So you go from your single leg, you go, all right, I'll just do an advanced tuck now. Or for the second set, you're doing advanced tuck. And this takes us into the third way that you can use it. So far we've gone, so far we've gone, take your best, do it. That's number one. Do it right at the start. Then the second one is the dynamic press or like take it a step back and then make a rep out of it so that you're working. And what you're doing is you're actually working the full, not necessarily the full, but you're working the whole range, like 180 degrees or 90 degrees, sorry, for your front lever. You're working that whole 90 degree range for your shoulders. So it's, it's doing a lot more than just holding the position. Holding the position's great, but doing an ISO hold of a pull up, which is holding like halfway in your pull up, isn't as good as doing reps, do it using the full range of motion. All right, otherwise people wouldn't bother doing pull-ups. <laughs> they would just hang on the bar with their elbows at 90 all the time. They just do it for ages. All right, and that's because that dynamic movement obviously is it's not just applying the tension to your muscles, but it's also stretching and uh, the muscles as they're trying to contract. So it just pings all your muscle fibers like uh, tiny little elastic bands in your arm and it just does wonders for your strength training. All right, which is why everyone does reps and why negatives are so powerful as well. <laughs> so there you go, a little bit of science for you. It was uh, childish science, I'll admit. I didn't go into too much detail, but that's because it doesn't matter. All right, you know now that doing your front lever, like doing a front lever, a press up to front lever, so you just leave it straight up into it, is a lot harder than coming down, all right? Or like uh, pulling up to the bar and then doing a negative pull, like a, a kind of extension to a front lever, which is the easiest, is doing a negative, like a negative into a front lever, all right? Um, so yeah, the hardest then is pressing up, levering up. So that's the one you do with the easier variation. That, and it should always be the hardest one you can make it, but obviously it's gonna be a step down from your best because your best you're only gonna be able to hold for a second or two or three or five maybe. And it's gonna be really difficult. You probably only do it once in your workout, okay? So then the next one, all right? And the next one is one of my favorites and it's just using them as a drop set. All right, and because they're so hard, these levers and dynamic skills, like, because they're so difficult for you, you can apply the kind of drop set idea, the inverted pyramid kind of idea, where you do the high, highest set, uh, you do your first set with the, the highest weight you can, and then as soon, as soon as you finish, you just drop the weight a bit and do more, and then drop the weight and drop the weight and drop the weight. And by the time you hit your last set, you're only doing one, uh, you're doing such a light, weight is it's almost laughable that it makes you struggle so much to do it but anyone who's ever done a drop set like that knows exactly what i mean like by the time you get to that last set that nice easy weight that those the last couple of reps are much harder than the first couple of reps you did on the highest weight <clacks> so you apply that and it's just about to taking your muscles and just completely shredding them uh, it's complete fatigue all right, so um, they're great for finishes and stuff like that, but I wouldn't recommend doing this in the start of your workout because you literally won't be able to do, you'll be so spent by the end of it, you won't be able to do anything. You won't be able to walk out the place. It's like hit training almost, isn't it? But just for your arms. <laughs> it's shoulder hit training. So what do you do for this then? You take your highest level progression. So say it's a straddle lever and you go whoop, in your straddle lever as long as you can, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And by the time you get down, you're already messed up. All right, then what you do is you just jump straight back on, single leg, the next, the next step down in the progression, uh, the progression kind of formula. So single leg, uh, hold that as long as you can, and then come down. And then immediately straight back up, advanced tuck, uh, hold it as long as you can, and then finally a tuck to finish. And the tuck is gonna be difficult, because you're gonna be so fatigued throughout it. What you can also do then is apply the, your dynamic rep version of your progression 
and apply that to your to your drop set. So you can do straddle raises or you can do single leg raises and then you can do advanced tuck raises and then eventually you're just doing press up to, to a tuck lever. All right, and each time it's getting harder and uh, you're, you're doing your 10 reps of it and then 10 reps of it and then 10 reps of it. And that is kind of like German volume training. I mean, it's not to that extreme, but it is similar in that you're, you're, you will take up a lot of your workout doing that. All right, but if you really want to achieve that front lever and you're feeling pretty fresh, like why not do that? Or even just do that at the end of your workout. So you start, you do your, your best, your straddle lever, yeah, own it, you're feeling good, right, rest of the workout, I'm gonna smash it out. So then you do dynamic set, you can just do three sets of 10, single leg raises, feeling good, like single leg, straight up to front lever, pin it, come down, everyone's happy. And then stage two, you're like, right, leave the front levers for a bit, let's do total body, like upper body strength training, a couple of pistol squats in there as well. So you do that foundation tricep, your pulls, your dips, your leg raises, which should be so hard, your leg raises by the time you've done all those front levers. And then after that, you do your set of pistol squats or whatever, let your upper body have a little break. And um, then you're like, right, finishes, cool. So you jump straight in. You've got that um, that drop set, you do your tens, and then you just walk straight out of the place because that is it, you're done for the day. So that's a great way that you can just do, that's a front lever workout, progression workout. Okay, it's quite complex. Like it might take you half hour or 40 minutes to do it, but uh, depending on how much breather and how many selfies you take in the gym. But uh, that, just literally, if you're trying to train your front lever, like just take that workout and go and rinse it, it'll take you, a month or two maybe and then you'll be like leave a king <laughs> and the same for any other thing you can just take that uh, template and just go bang i'm just going to use that as my skill training kind of strength workout while you're in a skill cycle and just run with it all right if that the skill and strength cycles have sound a bit complicated don't worry about it um we'll get into that in a couple of episodes where i talk about um so, uh, training cycles splitting your strength and your skill work and stuff like that uh, so we'll get into that in a couple of weeks. If you really want to get uh, find out about it now, you can go to uh, the complete beginner's guide to uh, calisthenics training, like, uh, which is morethanlifting.com slash start here, which is kind of complicated because it, it also reads star there, but you know, we'll keep that between us. So <laughs> go there and it, it mentions it and we talk about it a bit there. There have also been a couple of previous podcast episodes with uh, Coach Thatch where I've talked extensively about training cycles and splitting up your stuff and deloading and all that good stuff. So there's plenty of information I've put out there if you want to go back for mine and uh, Coach Thatch's conversations, which weren't too long ago. Uh, and uh, I do miss him, Coach Thatch, if you're listening, just give me a DM or something. <laughs> and yeah, so I'm going off topic here. <laughs> so that's another way that you can use these skills, all right? Finishers as well are also just brilliant. Okay, so finishers are their own topic in another sense because you can take any exercise that is like a supportive exercise for that, um, for that whatever skill you're trying to achieve. So most of them are obviously core and shoulder based, kind of that's where you need to focus a lot of your strength training. So you can take stuff like flutter kicks, which are very similar to a lever except you're lying down. And um, yeah, something like that, which will you can do for ages if you just like grin your grit your teeth and just take it like a man, and you can go as long as you can, or you can do like L sit flutter kicks if you're more advanced or something like that. Some way that you can take an, a, a skill and just use it to just rinse, 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 because that's what finish is about. Just totally total hypertrophy. Um, yeah, so really, I mean. As far as it goes, I think that's about it for uh, for your progression templates. There are other ways that you can actually use these, um, but they're more like intricacies, and this is where we go off the, using the actual template and these actual basic di direct progression formulas and move into these supportive exercises and stuff, which I kind of touched on just a second ago because I was so excited about it. Um, yeah, so that is it, all right, guys. So there's three ways you can use these progression formulas in your workouts and programs. And the first one is just bang at the start, do your hardest one. The second one is take um, your the next stage down and turn it into a dynamic exercise, so like pressing into it or um, 
yeah, so pressing into it because they're all levers, so you should have your arms straight all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so pressing into it, and then the drop set where you take your highest one and then you immediately go to your next and then next all the way down the uh, progression formula until you're at just your regular tuck version and you know that should be super hard by that time. All right, so that is it for me for today. And uh, yeah, if you like what you've heard, give us a uh, subscribe and a rate and an honest five star rating and review, wherever it is that you listen to your podcast, Stitcher, iTunes, or uh, yeah, I don't know if you can on Spotify. Do you reckon you can? I should probably check that out. <laughs> uh, yeah, or if you want to get hold of me at More Than Lifting anywhere and everywhere, and yeah, just hit me up. Uh, I'm a human being and I talk to people. So if you want to talk about coaching, we can talk about coaching. If you just want some tips on something, just hit me up. I'm gonna talk to you about some tips on something. You know, we, um, I'm not like, a, I'm not a dick. I help you out. Plus, I like talking to people about this stuff, so it'll be cool. The hundred push-up challenge is still going morethanlifting.com slash 100 challenge to sign up to that. It's going every week, guys, so just, you're never too late to join. Jump in, you can either start at the beginning or you can just jump in where we are, because we're not, it's not that crazy now, isn't it? We're not so far ahead that you'll never be able to catch up. This first half of the year, you can kind of just jump in wherever you are, and uh, it will be a challenge, of course, but uh, what I'd recommend you do is you just do week one, so you get used to five sets of 20 push-ups, and then just jump in wherever we are. We're, uh, you're welcome. You're welcome any week. So, <laughs> yeah, sign up for that 100 challenge. Monlifting.com slash 100 challenge. Otherwise, keep in touch with yourselves, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good day.